Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. My name is Daniel Wood. I am currently a junior class of 2022 at Syracuse University pursuing a dual degree in broadcast journalism and international relations. So I'm in the Newhouse School and the Maxwell School. My name is Frankie Saylor and I'm a current senior class of 2021 at Syracuse University. I'm a Whitman Newhouse School majoring in marketing and public relations with a minor in psychology. I'm Cameron Simon. I'm a senior advertising major minoring in public health from Richmond, Virginia. I'm so excited to be here and to give you this tour. The Office of Alumni Engagement. This is so awesome because the office actually just moved here and there is so much history within this building. It used to be the old counseling center and now it's smack dab in Walnut Place in a great location. While I was a work study student, I had the opportunity to meet with so many awesome alumni and connect. And I've always felt that this office is just a resource for not only alumni, but students to have a place on campus. Finished in 2016, the Ihorn Family Walk is now an absolute staple of Syracuse and an excellent way to get through campus quick. The walk itself is heated, so yet another way Syracuse is trying to combat the vicious winters. One of the main buildings located on the Einhorn Family Walk is Bird Library, which is one of the main and largest libraries on campus. It's really unique because it fosters a study environment for everyone and it gets progressively quieter the further you go up the building. Within the building, there are also many different multicultural offices and resource offices. Also on the promenade is Shine Student Center, which I can turn over to Frankie. Shine is getting a facelift this fall with a new setup that we are all very excited to see. Hall of Languages still stands as the staple centerpiece of Syracuse University since 1870. Some may not know, but when the university first opened, Hall of Languages served as everything from a dorm to a dining hall to classroom for Syracuse first students. Today, it's safe to say that nearly every Syracuse University student will take at least one course in the building as it serves as the home to our largest college, which is the College of Arts and Science. Hi everyone, my name is Cleo Hamilton. I am an Inclusive View graduate from the class of 2020, and I'm currently an intern in the Office of Alumni Engagement. I was a 2019 to 2020 Remembrance Scholar. I want to talk about a special place on campus, the Wall of Remembrance. The Wall of Remembrance includes the names of the 35 SU students who died on Pam Am Flight 103. This landmark at Syracuse reminds our orange community to look back and act forward. Standing tall as Syracuse's very own Hogwarts, Krauss College is home to the Visual and Performing Arts College of Syracuse. You may not know this, but Syracuse has its very own secret society, a secret society of chime masters that takes up residence in Krauss College. Another classic Syracuse tradition is sledding down the Krauss Hill during the first snow. Newhouse, my stomping ground. I know when some of you were in school, Newhouse was only one building, but now it's three if you could imagine, and they're all interconnected. So we don't have to go outside when it snows. So there are so many awesome facilities within Newhouse. One that I love is the cage. The cage allows for us to check out any equipment that we have, and it has so much awesome technology within it. We also have food.com, which is a little cafe in Newhouse. I'm biased, I think it's the best smoothies on campus. <laughs> Another fun fact about Newhouse is that we really pride ourselves on the number of veterans in the school. So it only makes sense that right across the street is the new National Veterans Resource Center at Syracuse. Syracuse University has been ranked the number one private school for veterans in the country for such a long time. So it's awesome that this facility has come into fruition and that we have this resource on campus. Whitman has enacted the Impress System, a point system for all students where they are placed in houses named after the streets at Border Whitman, Adams, Marshall, Waverly, and Harrison, and can earn points for themselves and their houses by attending professional development opportunities outside the classroom. Along with Impress, Whitman continues to have ideas coming out of the launch pad, a place where students are able to go and get advice and funding to get their business ideas off the ground. The Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs, one of my schools, is one of the best colleges for research at Syracuse. Syracuse University is currently ranked as an R1 research university, and people tend to think research is just related to STEM majors. However, the Maxwell School is a great example of how you can do research in any of the schools and colleges at Syracuse. Something new at Maxwell is that undergraduate students can officially enroll into the Maxwell School without having to duly enroll into the College of Arts and Sciences. Though many remember the area it takes up fondly as where they lived during their time at SU, the Life Sciences Complex off of Comstock is an excellent state-of-the-art facility. Along with a full-functioning greenhouse, Life Sciences has a hefty pot population nesting on the roof, with a live stream you can tune into anywhere in the country. Here is Falk. 
As a public health minor, I spend a lot of time here, and there are a variety of degree options in folk that I don't think people know about. So let's get into it. They have nutrition, food studies, sports management, early childhood special education, human development, and much, much more. I like to think of folk as the health and wellness school because it just encompasses all of those different majors. And let's not forget the folk kitchens. Located at the center of campus, the Shaw Quad truly is the heart of Syracuse University. Our engineering school remains one of the most challenging and competitive programs at Syracuse University. The iSchool, or the School of Information Studies, is one of Syracuse University's fastest growing programs and boasts a high job placement rate for its graduates. Bown Hall is home to chemistry labs as well as the Renee Crown Honors Program. An excellent place to spend five years, Slocum houses architecture and the long studio nights it entails. SU's program consistently remains in the top five in the country. Home of the math department, Carnegie remains as pristine and quiet as ever. To wrap up our quad tour, the physics building is the only building on our campus that is not named after an individual. Hendrix Chapel is 90 years old this year and serves as the largest multi-denominational chapel on any college campus in the United States. In the basement of Hendrix Chapel, you can find People's Place, which is an independent, student-run, nonprofit coffee shop offering great food, prices, and a really cool atmosphere. For some romance, the Kissing Bench has been a landmark on Syracuse University's campus for years, and it's believed that if you do get kissed by your partner on the bench, you two will get married and live happily ever after. Right next to the quad, the orange robe is full of granite pavers engraved with names from faculty, staff, students, alumni, friends, and all lovers of Syracuse University. In an effort to promote diversity and inclusion, the orange grove now has seats with National Panhellenic Councils engraved on them. There are 17 residence hall complexes and then there's South Campus, which offers apartment style living for students that are sophomores and above. Each one of them offers a unique experience and people tend to be pretty passionate about where they live, especially first year residence halls. For me personally, I lived on Sadler Floor 3 and it's still to this day a defining part of my Syracuse journey. I lived in the honors learning community and I made some of my closest friends on that floor. Since opening last fall of 2019, the Barnes Center at the Arch is campus's new all-encompassing center for all things health. Along with a fully stocked gym with equipment and free weights, the Barn Center also includes other fun fitness areas, like a rock climbing wall, a track, a pool, and even an e-sports room equipped with tons of different video games. On the mental health side, counseling and the pharmacy have moved over and there's even a dog therapy room to spend valuable time with furry friends. After opening in 1980, the dome underwent a major renovation for its 40th birthday. Gone is the old air supported roof and in its place is a fixed roof supporting a massive jumbotron. All fans are very eager to get back in and see the new roof along with other fun surprises. Thank you for taking the Orange Central Campus Highlights Tour. We really hope you enjoyed this quick look at everything new happening on campus. And we're all extremely eager for when you're able to come back and see it in person with us. I'm Cameron. I'm Frankie. I'm Cleo. And I'm Daniel. Go, Go Orange! Orange.